Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Now I'd like to recognize myself five minutes for the first uh, round of, of questions. Um, uh, Mr. Secretary, DOE strategy is built on the premise that states will volunteer to host interim storage or a repository facility. Your testimony mentions reports that, and I'm quoting the, your testimony, a number of communities are exploring the possibility of hosting a consolidated storage facility. Uh, so the question is, what states have indicated interest in hosting a facility? Uh, first, I should I want to clarify, Mr. Chairman, that of course uh, at this stage we are not engaging in any kind of negotiations or anything anything of that type. Uh, there are, uh, however, there have been a number of public reports, and in fact, uh, one county uh, uh, has in fact passed a resolution expressing uh, interest, based also upon the experiences in Europe. Uh, we believe there is there are reasons for optimism. Uh, that we can have. So we don't have process. states that have shown interest right now, nor do we have governors or U.S. senators who are making a pitch for their state to be considered. Well, it's certainly premature for any so-called pitch, because right now we don't have even the authorities uh, to, to move forward. Well, no, it's not unlikely with, with the Blue Ribbon Commission and with the statements by this administration for states to have come forward and tried to organize their own political support with the, the governor's office and, the, and their sitting senators to be making this pitch that we would consider it. I mean, just there's nothing in law that says they can't start trying to mobilize public support in their state for, for following up on this proposal, is there? Well, uh, no, and I, again, as I've said, uh, there have been certainly reports in the media. Uh, but you can't tell us of any states which have done that additional that initial work, other than this one county and some states. Well, one county in in uh, that's in, in Texas. I mean, it was public. A uh, public resolution was passed. Uh, uh, recently, there were media reports, which I have not attempted to any way confirm. But they were statements made um, in in Mississippi. Uh, there have been a number of of of, of statements uh, made. Uh, but again, until we have the authorities. Uh, can put out a request for proposals, and I think, frankly, our position to provide some technical support uh, for developing the information uh, for potential communities, uh, I think it would be premature, uh, frankly. The, it seems to me that a majority of these siting efforts end up with local communities supporting a facility, maybe this county, and state level officials opposing it. In fact, if I remember, the history of Yucca Mountain was the State General Assembly passed a resolution in support of the initial siting of Yucca Mountain. So um, we also have, uh, you know, Nye, Nye County versus Nevada, private fuel storage versus Utah. Uh, and, and your uh, opening, uh, your written testimony mentions consent-based areas that might be successful, i.e. Sweden and Finland, but you fail to mention England, a consent-based approach that the Blue Ribbon Commission touted. And what happened to that? consent-based approach? Uh, these are tortuous paths. Uh, and so it was not successful as an And I think, and I think we, yeah, we will. Uh, the so, I mean, my point is, what a, makes you believe that another consent-based approach somewhere in this country is not going to end up 30 years later and $15 billion in the hole, uh, just like we have right now at Yucca Mountain? Well, again, I think these, look, we all know these, all of these issues around nuclear waste take time. Uh, one example uh, that you know, it's not a high-level waste repository, but which is a but, lot different than what we're talking but, about. But in WIP with the Transuranic uh, facility, we did have a similar situation with the state, and but, now we have a very successful. But I have a personal knowledge of a U.S. senator who fought against that as the attorney, attorney general, who's now a sitting U.S. senator from that state. So yes. uh, we better be careful. I think this this illusion that this consent-based approach is going to be panacea. I'm not sure is supported by the facts. Let me, another thing that the Blue Ribbon Commission that you're also promoting is that uh, incentives are a key to success. Um, and the, the estimated cost of this effort is uh, from, from the beginning is $5.6 billion over 10 years. Why not offer this money to Nevada? Again, the recommendation is around a consent-based approach. Any state uh, and community uh, uh, can come forward. So the state of Nevada, I mean, the, the issue would be, this, part of the problem with the state of Nevada is they say, show me the money. We don't believe you'll follow through and there's not going to be any additional benefits. Wouldn't $5.6 billion to a state that has a struggling economy, that could rebuild its roads, bring in rail lines, 
and probably continue to do what we have and the uh, Department of Energy has done with UNLV, continue to support their advanced nuclear energy technology, don't you think that would be a good lure? Uh, again, uh, we are advocating a consent-based approach. Any state can come forward. And we do believe that uh, research, materials testing, uh, uh, characterization facilities are an important part of a storage program uh, and would be part and presumably would be part of a possible, quotes, incentive uh, program.